Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new laptop to the market from a company known as GMK Tech. Now, in the past, we've actually taken a look at a lot of their products, but they mainly focus on mini PCs until now with their brand new G-Bug. Now, the main reason I wanted to take a look at this was the build quality and portability of this laptop. Now, it's not a gaming machine, but you can definitely get some gaming out of the way on it and emulation, but to tell you the truth, I'm actually really impressed with this little laptop, given that it is constructed of metal. You can get around six and a half hours of battery life out of this in balanced mode. And taking a look in here, we've got that fingerprint sensor on a really large trackpad, given the size of the laptop itself. Plus, we've got that 4K IPS display. It's 100% sRGB. 60 hertz, and yeah, I mean, it does look great. I've got it scaled up right now because it is a 14 inch 4K, but once you scale it down and you want to watch some 4K video on it, this thing really pops. The keyboard and trackpad they opted to use here is perfect for this laptop. Obviously, we've got multi touch gestures built in. It is a backlit keyboard, and this comes standard with a 10 core, 12 thread CPU. You can opt to pick this up with either 512 gigabytes of storage or a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD pre-installed. And it's a really portable platform. One thing I really do like about this is the trackpad itself. Super smooth operation, multi-touch. We do have that fingerprint sensor built in so we can log in really quickly to Windows 11 Pro, which is the operating system that comes pre-installed on the G-Bug. Give you a quick look here at that backlit keyboard. There's three brightness modes here, basically off, Brightness 1, Brightness 2, and it's plenty for when you've got a dark situation. You're going to be able to see all the keys you need to hit. Taking a look at the I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got our barrel jack for power in. We've also got a full-function USB Type-C port. This will do video out, plus we can charge the internal battery from this USB-C, full-size HDMI, and one USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Moving over to the right-hand side, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two more USB 3.2 ports, and a micro SD card reader. When it comes to the specs of the G-Book, for the CPU, we've got the Intel i5-12-35U. 10 cores, 12 threads, up to 4.4 gigahertz. We've got built-in Iris Xe graphics with 80 execution units, up to 1200 megahertz. 16 gigabytes of non-user replaceable DDR5 RAM at 4800 megatransfers per second. And again, they do offer two different storage variants, 512 or 1 terabyte, but both of them are using a PCIe 3.0 2280M.2 SSD, so you can easily upgrade this if you want to. We've got that 14-inch IPS display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 60 hertz, and up to 400 nits of brightness. We'll take a look at the full specs in a second because it is a beautiful panel. AX201 Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 51.3 watt hour battery. They're claiming up to seven hours of use. I've been getting around six and a half hours in balanced mode, but it does support 65 watt fast charging, so we can fully charge this in 2.5 hours. And this is running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. And here's a quick rundown on the IPS panel they have here. It does support HDR, 100% sRGB, 400 nits of brightness, 178 degree viewing angle, 315 pixels per inch, and it's a 5 millisecond panel. First thing I wanted to do here was check out some 4K video playback from YouTube, and I did scale this down a bit. Uh, we are at a 4K resolution. Very snappy little system here. I mean, we've got those 10 cores, 12 threads. It's not a slouch at all. It'll definitely get some web browsing out of the way. You want to do some email checking, document editing. You could even get some light photo editing out of the way on this. But uh, for video playback, we're going to go all the way up to 4K. And I just did that to kind of reset that uh, drop frame section. Go ahead and hit play. Dual stereo speakers built in. Sound pretty good. I wish they got a bit louder. But uh, overall, you know, if you're using this as a laptop should be used right in front of you, you shouldn't have an issue hearing it at all. The speakers are upward facing. They're right on the sides there by the keyboard. And in balanced mode, this is running at about 15 watts. You could definitely up that, especially when it comes to gaming. That's something you'll probably want to do. Go to performance mode. But in balanced mode, using it as an everyday laptop, this thing goes right through anything you want to do on it. I also ran Geekbench 5, and I was really impressed by what this little CPU was putting out. We got a single core score of 1,967, multi 7,037. 
Not bad at all for a super thin and light laptop, and this CPU is set up a bit different than, uh, you know, the higher-end i5s or i7s from 12th or 13th gen. We do have 10 cores and 12 threads, but we've only got two performance cores, and those are the cores that'll go up to 4.4 gigahertz. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some light gaming and some higher-end emulation. And first, for PC gaming, we've got Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. We're at about 23 chunks right now, and it's running at 60 FPS. You'll see it kind of fluctuate 59, 60. Never notice it if you don't have a frame counter on. Something like Minecraft and Roblox is going to run perfectly fine on this machine. And by the way, I am using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, but let's go ahead and take it up just a bit. OG Skyrim, still one of my favorite games. Right now, we're at 1080p low settings. At medium settings, we get an average of around 54 FPS, so taking it down to low 1080 or even medium 900p is probably the way to go. You gotta keep in mind that with these Intel Iris Xe graphics, we only have 80 execution units. It's not the higher end 96, but it's getting really close. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, I wanted to test out a newer one. We've got Forza Horizon 5, not the hardest game to run, and right now we're at low settings 720p. Unfortunately, hitting 60 FPS, you will have to up that wattage, and if you take a look at Afterburner, that CPU isn't getting hot at all. I actually expected this to get much hotter than it did, but in performance mode, the CPU will only do up to 28 watts, and that's with the uh, GPU and CPU stressed out. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and first up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, F-Zero GX on the hardest track, Firefield, 1080p, and we are using the DirectX 11 backend. When it comes to GameCube, Wii, PSP, N64, this little chip has more than enough power to emulate them at full speed. Even some Nintendo Switch games will be playable with Yuzu. But the next one I wanted to test was Wii U using the SimU emulator. Here's Bayonetta 2, and uh, we are at 720p. Got a couple dips here and there. There is some settings that I could probably tweak to get this to run at a constant 60. I mean, overall, it's not too bad. And we're actually not pushing the CPU too hard either. And finally, we've got some PS2 using PC SX2. 720p, probably should have took it up to 1080 just to see if we could do it. But this is Gran Turismo 4 running at a constant 60. I've always had really good luck with emulation on these 12th gen i5s. Even the i3s, the lower end 1215U, does a really great job. With those higher clocks and really good single core performance, these do a really awesome job for emulation. So overall, I've been really enjoying using this laptop. Like I mentioned, it's been my carry around for the last week. Great keyboard, awesome trackpad, and an absolutely beautiful 4K display. Now, it's not a AAA gaming machine, but that's not what this is about. This is great for a carry around, email checking, you want to do some photo editing, watch some videos, web browsing. You're going to have plenty of power and a really good time with this little laptop doing things like that. And of course, if you want to play some older games and emulate a bunch of stuff, this little thing will definitely get you by. If you're interested in learning a little more about the GMK Tech G Book, I will leave some links in the description. I'll leave links to their official website and Amazon. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.